Today is the seventh in our series of 10 spotlights on black composers. Previous spotlights included Samuel Coleridge Taylor, Florence Price, Scott Joplin, Nathaniel Dett, Margaret Bonds, and William Grant Still. Of these six composers, four were black American composers, one was a Canadian American black composer, and one was a British composer who toured the United States and became very popular here later in life. Although our focus in this 10-part series is on black American composers, today's composer was born 30 years before the United States of America even came into existence and never spent a day in the United States. However, President John Adams called him, quote, the most accomplished man in Europe, unquote. Today's spotlight shines on Joseph Bologna, Le Chevalier de Saint-Georges, who was born on Christmas Day in 1745 on the French Caribbean island of Guadeloupe, the son of a wealthy French plantation owner and an enslaved woman of Senegalese origin. Joseph was a prolific French classical composer, violin virtuoso, conductor of the leading symphony orchestra in Paris on the court of Marie Antoinette, he was even Marie Antoinette's harpsichord teacher, and a renowned champion, fencer, and athlete. He was one of the most important musicians in Paris during the pre-revolutionary period. Although not much is known about Joseph's earlier musical education, we do know that he gave signs of his precocious gifts at a very early age. His facility for learning astounded his teachers. Joseph's father knew that in the colonies his remarkable son would be condemned to a life of humiliation and casual brutality. So he brought him to France at age eight, where he would have greater opportunities and suffer less overt prejudice. In 1957, Joseph's father was named Gentleman of the King's Chamber, serving as a personal assistant to King Louis XV. At the age of 17, Joseph was made an officer of the King's bodyguard and given the title Le Chevalier de Saint-Georges. Although Joseph enjoyed some of the privileges of his father being a noble, he still had to endure the racism and racist laws that existed in pre-revolutionary France. Being of mixed race, he had greater legal rights than a slave, but in spite of his name and in spite of his fame, he would forever be denied the privileges of a white man. On August 26, 1789, when the revolution declared equal rights to all French people, Saint-Georges embraced the new law and decided to provide his services to the Revolutionary Army. He became one of the first black colonels in the French Army, leading 800 infantrymen and 200 cavalries in Europe's first all-black regiment, fighting on the side of the Republic. Today, the Chevalier de Saint-Georges is best remembered as the first known classical composer of African ancestry. He was extraordinarily prolific, composing two symphonies, three sets of string quartets, six comic operas, three violin sonatas, 14 violin concertos, a sonata for harp and flute, which you'll hear during today's service, a bassoon concerto, a clarinet concerto, a cello concerto, six violin duos, several songs, and eight symphonies concertantes, a new intrinsically Parisian genre of which he was one of the chief exponents. He knew many composers, including Salieri, Gossek, Gluck, and Mozart. He began his professional career as a musician with Le Concert des Amateurs. He made a sensational debut as a soloist with that orchestra in 1772. The following year, he was named its conductor. Under his leadership, it became regarded as the finest orchestra in Paris and one of the finest in all Europe. In 1781, finances forced the orchestra to disband and Bologne became director of the newly formed orchestra Le Concert Olympique. 
Queen Marie Antoinette, an accomplished musician herself, frequently attended its concerts. Under Bologna's baton, the orchestra premiered Haydn's six Paris symphonies in 1786, with the Queen in attendance. The Queen would sometimes hold private musical salons at Versailles. She limited the audience to her intimate circle and a few musicians, among them the Chevalier de Saint-Georges. Invited to play music with the Queen, Joseph probably played his violin sonatas with Her Majesty playing the forte piano. Joseph Bologna's extraordinary life took an unfortunate turn in 1793 when he was imprisoned for 11 months on false charges and threatened with execution after returning from his military duties. Although he was subsequently acquitted and released, he decided to retire. During his retirement, he became even more devoted to playing his violin, saying, quote, Never before did I play it so well. Unquote. Joseph Bologna, Chevalier de Saint Georges, died in Paris in 1799 at the age of 53.